Right now, 60,000 people are being told to evacuate after a series of explosions at a chemical plant. A leaking reactor at Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant has been evacuated after officials detected extremely high levels of radiation. High pressure ethylene vapor discharged from the reactor into the atmosphere. It was released horizontally toward an area where many people were working rather than vertically to a safe location. Soon after, a nearby welding machine likely ignited the vapor and a large fire erupted. That water pipe has actually brought down some of the structure around the cooling tower, putting it at risk of collapse. Causing a large, dense cloud containing chlorine gas, which soon drifted off-site. MGPI employees were evacuated from the site and 11,000 Atchison citizens were advised to either shelter in place or evacuate. That's the warning sign. So if you hear, if, you, if it's not the first Wednesday at noon and you hear that, yeah. get in your car and get as far as, as you can. So, because that means there's a problem at Sequoia. Chemical plants, nuclear power plants, and other special facilities that participate in potentially dangerous activity may be required to have special evacuation systems due to the risk and potential for hazards to be exposed throughout the plant or even the public. This right here is my demonstration board and today we're going to be talking more about those systems. Many special plants can have a great risk for hazards other than fire. So using fire alarms to trigger an evacuation in a non-fire emergency can be misleading. That's why other special evacuation systems might be included in these facilities. And when these systems are activated, the potential for fire or fire may already be included in that hazard. So right here, I have two Global Fire Control RMS-1T plant evacuation pull stations. These systems can be designed and programmed so that when one of these is pulled, audio and visual notification appliances trigger. And this can include outdoor warning sirens, horns, strobes, bells, special voice evacuation, etc. It can also trigger alerts such as phone calls, text messages, emails, and it can give notifications to an emergency communication center, also known as dispatch. Depending on the standard operating procedures for when that emergency notification arises and the situational information that's available, emergency services could have anything from a small to a large scale response. And as more information comes into a dispatching center, they can also notify government and non-government and other agencies that should know about the situation. Video from Sky Fox high above the Tico Big Bend power station shows fire trucks and emergency personnel in the middle of a rapid rescue response after an explosion was reported inside the plant. And when you pull one of these pull stations, these systems can also automatically trigger machines to shut down, doors to close, vents to either open or close and other actions based on the needs of the facility and the level of hazard that there is. So basically, when an emergency situation arises that requires a plant evacuation, pulling one of these can get the ball rolling when it comes to emergency procedures. And that's why these pull stations and these systems are such a great asset when it comes to dangerous facilities. With the level of complexity that these systems can reach that I just described to you, they're obviously probably gonna be used on a very large control panel of some kind. This one right here is just an ADT Unimode 10UD. It's a 10 zone conventional fire alarm control panel. And I'm kind of using it today as a plant evacuation control panel. So I have things wired up so that when you pull one of these plant evacuation pull stations, it triggers these alert alarms. This right here is a Wheelock RSSA-24MCW. It's a strobe only. And then this right here is a EST G1AW-VMA. And this one is also a strobe only. Both of them have amber strobes. So if both these are strobes, what do I have as an audible notification device? Well, yep. I pulled out the siren. Remember the New Year sounding that I did and the videos that I made on this thing? Yeah. <laughs> it is a Vixen VXS-1450 AR and it is loud. So get ready. 
It runs on 120 volts AC, so in order to even use it on the system, I had to use one of the special relays that I have. And it is right now being coded to two-stage by the fire alarm control panel, which I'm not going to be demonstrating two-stage, but it just it's a pattern that is nice on the siren, which you'll hear later in the video. It's time to activate the system. This is going to be loud, just as a little warning. <laughs> And yes, of course, I do have hearing protection in. So I'm gonna first pull this pull station on the left. This one does have a glass brake rod in it, inside of it. I decided to go ahead and install one in there just to make it more realistic. So plant evacuation, lift, and pull down. Here we go. Yep, that is loud. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pull this other one and I'll actually go walk outside and we'll see how loud it is outside. Here we go. Definitely pretty loud out here. All right, wow, <laughs> that is a loud system. Let's go ahead and reset the pull stations. These use a hex key. This one has glass in it still, as you can see. There is all of the broken glass. I'll clean that up a little later. There we go. And yes, I do have this garbage can here just to catch any of the glass that might have fallen. And we'll go ahead and reset the panel. I think that's gonna do it for today's test at the nuclear power plant. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. If you found any of this interesting, definitely go check out some of my other videos. Have a great day, everyone.